Welcome to Life Smithing with Cynthia. This is Cynthia Burley. Today's topic is meditation, and we have special guest star, Louis Tafari. We're back with Louis Tafari, who is the owner of Romanitas Press. And today he's going to speak to us about his new offering, Franciscan Meditations. Welcome, Louis. How are you doing? Hi, Cynthia. Good. How are you? I'm actually excellent. And I'd love for you to tell our listeners a little bit about you and what you do in the Catholic space. Okay, well, I'm the owner of uh, Romanitas Press, and Romanitas Press is focused on the traditional uh, Roman liturgy. Um, Some people call it the Latin Mass, so uh, I publish things. I um, do consultative training work as well, too, so Have Altar will come and help train your servers or even your priests or sacristans on how to do things. Um, I also publish materials that are either training materials or instructional materials um, about the traditional Roman Mass. Um, so I'm doing a whole variety of things all at once. Basically try to um, promote the traditional Mass as much as we can and get people to have a better appreciation and understanding of it, as well as to um, better execute um, the ceremonies and all the other things that go along with it. So you teach servers how to actually um, serve the traditional Latin Mass? Correct. I even teach priests. I teach oh, wonderful. I, I work with architects. Um, so, you know, everything that's that's involved with that. Oh, tell me about your work with architects. Well, so, uh, you know, obviously there's cases where we're trying to do a renovation in a church that underwent an unfortunate, quote unquote, recovation back in the 70s or 80s. Um, or in there's cases where there's new churches being built. And so what will happen is, uh, you know, architects or the people involved in the construction of the of the the, the, the church or the uh, renovation of the sanctuary want to make sure that they get it right. And what's really important is not only um, you consider how much space you have for properly carrying out the ceremonies, um, also as well that the uh, altar has been correctly built. Um, so all those various um, things that have to be considered. Um, so I'll work with them. I've even helped people just with churches in general, um, the layout or even even the design, um, you know, whether it's Gothic, Baroque or whatever. Wow, that's actually awesome. Okay, so uh, tell us a little bit about your new offering. And I understand it's a Franciscan meditation. And you know that meditation is very, very dear to my heart. I happen to be partial to St. Teresa of Avila, and also St. John of the Cross. And I'm curious about what Franciscan meditation is. So what makes Franciscan meditation Franciscan? Well, okay, so obviously every religious order kind of follows the charism of its founder. So in in the case of the Carmelites that you love so dearly, uh, many people do love the Carmelites' spirit of charism. Um, we also have the Dominican charism, the Benedictine charism, um, and of course, very famous, the Franciscan charism. And unfortunately, a lot of people identify St. Francis C.C. as this guy running around hugging trees and right. talking to birds. <laughs> you know what's um, funny? You know what's funny, Louis? You know what's funny? Um, I'm actually a, a Dominican. I'm a lay Dominican. And I like wow. to call myself a Carm Dom or a Dom Carm. <laughs> and I actually have a Dominican brother. We feel the same way. We love um, Carmelite spirituality. Um, and so we love to combine the two, you know. Uh, so it's interesting that you said that. So well, tell us more. Mm-hmm. If we were to compare Dominican spirituality to Franciscan spirituality, we'd really have to look at, like, um, St. Thomas Aquinas, the great angelic doctor of the Dominican order, who right. was very celestial uh, in his approach to um, the exposition of theology and philosophy as well as spirituality. And in, in fact, we may say that that is the hallmark of the Dominican order is the scholasticism. On the other hand, with the Franciscans, um, we have St. Bonaventure, their great um, doctor of the church. And he tended to be more mystical in his approach to theology. So you might say when St. Bonaventure 
is speaking about theology, uh, he tends to be a little more poetic in his expressions of the definition of theology, whereas St. Uh, Thomas Aquinas tends to be more um, definitive uh, and more uh, technical, you might say. So there's a great difference there in how the Dominican order versus the Franciscan order will approach theology. And you right. see this in their spirituality as well, too. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the Franciscans have this great love of the mystery of the humanity of our Lord and therefore of the humility of Jesus Christ. And again, they tend to um, mysticize what they're looking at, to look at the mystical um, meaning behind it, the import behind it. And that's what you can really see in these Franciscan meditations. Um, the Franciscan meditations, uh, it's actually a seven-volume set that was written in 1962 uh, by a Capuchin. So this is part of the Franciscan order. Um, two of the most famous um, Capuchin um, members that we think of today would be um, Padre Pio uh, of Italy, and then, of course, Father Solanus Casey of Detroit, uh, Michigan. They were both Capuchins. And he was just beatified. Father Solanus Casey was just yes. beatified in Detroit. Yes. And I got to attend that, so that was great. Yes, yes. I have a, a great devotion to Father Solanus Casey and, and, and Padre Pio. Um, and the Capuchins... Uh, they're basically a reform of the Franciscan order, you might say, just like Cistercians and Trappists are also reforms of, of the Benedictine order. Uh, St. Teresa of Avila, St. John of the Cross helped to form uh, reforms of the Carmelite order as well. Right. Um, so it's all interesting that these are different branches of the same order, you might say, or different orders. So Father Bernadine Gulbel was a German a Capuchin, and he actually had some earlier editions of his uh, of his seven volume set Franciscan Meditations. This one was published in 1962. It's extremely rare. Um, I could not find a copy of it anywhere uh, when I undertook a recent search on the internet. If you did find it, it's going to cost you in excess of $250. Uh, I happened to find a copy many years ago in a bookstore, and I, I grabbed it because I love St. Francis of Assisi is my patron. I love Franciscan spirituality. Oh wow. But Franciscan meditations uh, really encapsulate is a is a view of the liturgical year and its meaning through the eyes of Franciscan spirituality. So it's the Franciscans looking at the liturgy from their very particular charism and drawing from it all these wonderful spiritual lessons that we can apply in our daily lives. So, for instance, um, this. Just a couple days ago, we had Passion. What well, that couple of days ago? I'm mixing up my weeks. So I apologize. Mm -hmm. A few days ago, we had Passion Sunday. So the reading or meditation on Passion Sunday is going to look at the propers of the traditional Roman Mass on Passion Sunday. So looking at the Epistle, the Gospel, the Introit, those kind of things. And it's going to look at these things and then it's going to draw from it through the eyes of the Franciscan spirituality what lessons we can apply and it's a meditation so it's 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 something you can read you think about you contemplate and you pray about and in fact at the end of every meditation there's a little prayer and sometimes it's addressed to saint francis of assisi particularly maybe sometimes it's addressed to god um using saint francis as a model or an example for how he exemplified this in his own life all right this is what the saints do for us we the saints are a great example for us to try to become more Christ-like right. because they accomplished it in their own lives in their very own particular way. I mean, the way St. Dominic did it was very different than the way St. Francis did it, as well as St. Teresa of Avila or St. John of the Cross and etc. cetera. Mm. So again, when you say um, through the eyes of Franciscan spirituality, are you speaking of, uh, you know, the mystery of the hum humanity of our Lord or what are you speaking of specifically? Yeah, I mean, so the Franciscans, like I said, you kind of, to be able to, it's kind of hard to explain the charisms of each religious order outside of themselves. I mean, you kind of have to, okay, so if you've ever read uh, An Intimate Life, I'm sure you have, that's Carmelite Spirituality, right? Oh, sorry, Divine Intimacy. Oh, Divine yes, Intimacy. I love Divine Intimacy. Yes. <laughs> Divine Intimacy is a classic of Carmelite Spirituality. Right. Now, for people who prefer Franciscan spirituality, will find um, the Divine Intimacy book 
rather dry. Be- they just do. They really? Find dry. I've heard a lot of people say that. I find Carmelite spirituality to be kind of dry. What is wrong Francis with those people? Spirit- they just, <laughs> because they, the Franciscan spirituality might have a little more um, vivaciousness to it or life to it. Because again, it's just a difference of, of, of approach to, so for instance, St. Francis today, unfortunately, um, gets identified as being a, a tree hugger. A hippie. Which is a misrepresentation of it. It is true. St. Francis saw the beauty and perfection of God in nature, in his creatures. And this is the true idea of St. Francis' love of his natural surroundings, not because he was a tree hugger, but because he saw God behind all this as the creator. And then as a result, looking at Christ's humanity, saying, here is God who deigned, who he was so humble that out of great love for us, he deigned to become man, to take on our um, human humanity, which is, you know, so low compared even to the angels. And in fact, by the way, it's out of this great love of Christ's incarnation that we have in the traditional mass where not only do we kneel during the credo at the words and almost boxes est, mm-hmm. so he became man, but also during the last gospel, which is the prologue of St. John, which describes Jesus as the word of God and becoming man, and that he also was born of flesh. And we genuflect or kneel at these phrases because the Franciscans following their holy founders uh, spiritual aspirations in this that adapted this devotion when they offered mass and then later it just became part of the actual mass you know I've heard before that um, you know throughout the times that the church looked to the religious for guidance in terms of a lot of things like liturgy and that's just a perfect example of how that Franciscan spirituality entered you know the mass so so you would say it's important to um i guess the question i want to ask is this particular meditation it follows a liturgical year correct yes so why is yes. that so important the liturgical year is the church speaking to us through um you know we could say specifically through the seasons so let's give an example from just a secular or civil year. You know, we have our yearly calendar, January through December. And yet every single month, there's something that gets repeated as a message to us through our lives, whether it's someone's birthday, whether it's a holiday, Christmas, Easter, you know, the two big things that the world likes to uh, celebrate, even though they don't even know why they're celebrating them. Mm-hmm. Here in the United States, we have Thanksgiving Day. We have our other national holidays. You know, honoring the presidents of the United States of America on President's Day, Veterans Day, July 4th, founding of our, our country, supposedly. All these things, they're there to remind us of who we are as, uh, firstly, as Catholics, but also as Americans, as well as just human beings. The liturgical year does this as well, too, because the church yearly gives us these repeated lessons. So, for instance, um, we have, on particular Sundays of the year, we have, well, at least in traditional Roman right, we have the same lessons every single Sunday on that Sunday. And that's because the church knows our human nature. She knows that we're like little children. We have to be constantly reminded. And so every year she repeats this to us over and over again. In fact, I never find it boring to have, you know, the parable of the Good Samaritan on that particular Sunday every single time. It's just, or the parable of the Good Shepherd because you just look forward to it. Oh, yeah, it's going to be this Sunday. It's the parable of this or the parable of that. Or it's going to be this epistle or, or that reading or this introit or that gradual uh, tra- or that chant that's sung or whatever. So the liturgical year is there to help us, guide us, and help us form us spiritually throughout the entire year. And um, the, there's so much to the sacred liturgy. One of my one of my mottos is you can never stop learning about the liturgy. It's this, this giant, uh, unfathomable treasure chest that has no bottom. It's a bottomless treasure chest. You can just keep taking the jewels and gems and pearls and gold coins out of it constantly, and it'll never empty it. Um, that's why there's like so many things available 
on the liturgical year that have been written for you know centuries and it just keeps on going i mean i, I have a huge uh library up here um and yet there's still more stuff i'm always finding and i i there's still stuff I'm reading, and there's still stuff like, hey, I never thought about that point that way that this particular author um, brought out. Um, so that's what's really neat about these. I think that we lost Lewis. Lewis? Are you still there? Yes. Okay, I hear you. I lost you for a minute there. Okay. <laughs> I, I wanted to say that. I wanted to say that as a as a convert, I'm more than ever convinced that Catholicism is bottomless because I, you know, it will take my whole life and actually some questions I'll have to ask, hopefully, you know, if, hopefully if I make it to heaven, I pray, I'll have to ask, you know, the Lord himself because I will never learn every little minute detail of Catholicism. It is so rich. And I guess it's the same about the, you know, just even the liturgy, the liturgy is so rich that, you know, I only know like a little bit of it. And even though you, you studied it, you've studied it for years, you still never learn the whole of it, right? Lewis? Lewis. Okay, seems like we got disconnected again. Let me, I'll take a break and I'll try to get him back on again. Okay, we're back. We had some technical difficulties, but Louis Tafari is back. And now, Louis, I'm going to... I'm here. <laughs> um, Louis, I'm going to um, ask you about your offering that you have for us, this exciting offering of Franciscan spirituality. So how many meditations are going to be made available? Well, initially, we're going to do uh, 80. So that's going to include all the Sundays of the year. It's going to include um, all of Christmas week, Easter week, Pentecost week, which are the three octaves in the traditional Roman mass. Um, also all of uh, the sacred tritium. So um, we have Holy Thursday, Good Friday, um, and Holy Saturday. In fact, those are already up there. Um, and, and then uh, there might be a couple major feast days, but it's going to, by 2019, uh, we will have 80 meditations up. Now, if you go to the website link, which is romanitaspress.com forward slash Franciscan dash meditations, or you can access that by going to romanitaspress.com and then you hover over the store and then you'll see the drop down box to show Franciscan meditations, MP3s. Um, right. You'll go on there and you'll see, for instance, like it'll say, uh, as an example, third week of Advent, but it only has Sunday. And that's because eventually we'll be doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday as well. And by, by, when we're done with all that, we'll have over 200 audio meditations available. Wow. It'll be the entire seven-volume set. And um, the great news is each of these meditations is available for only 99 cents. Oh, wonderful. And, yeah, just cheap 99 cents. You can download it as an MP3. Um, so you can listen to it from your computer, from your phone, from your iPod, whatever listening device you're using that accepts MP3s. Um, you know, so if you're working, you want to hear this in the background. Um, again, you can listen to it whenever you want to. The meditations are quite short. Um, they could be anywhere from six minutes long up to about 16 minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, so they're not very long. Um, and uh, you got to hear a sample, so what did you think? I think it was awesome. It was very, um, the person that was actually reading the meditations, um, he was speaking a very um, soothing type of tone, something that you can actually sit back and, and listen and meditate on his words. Right. Well, Alex, it's, it's Alex Barbas. He's a, a friend of mine, and uh, he's uh, working very hard on these. And we're also trying to stay three weeks ahead of um of, of wherever we're at so today so for instance 
upcoming is Palm Sunday, which we already have up there, of course. Um, but we're already up to Easter Monday. We're trying to complete the rest of Easter week and then move on. So we're trying to stay well in advance. So if people want to listen to these recordings in advance, they can. And obviously by 2019, um, once they're up, they're up. Um, hmm. I did want to tell a few people just real quick. Um, if you listen to the first few recordings we did, which actually we attempted to to have the first set of recordings available by Christmas. It just didn't work out that way. But you'll see that they're up there anyways. Um, the Vigil of Christmas um, and then a few others and then up to Ash Wednesday. Um, and some of the first ones, a few people said they, they thought uh, there could have been a little more life in how the recordings were read, and we understand that. And um, the more recent ones definitely have – we're done with a more vivacious uh, reading style. <laughs> and so right. uh, just so you know, if you listen to one of those earlier ones, um, they're, they're a little bit different than the, than the more later ones that we have now. We uh, definitely uh, want to improve what we're doing. Um, we're very dedicated to this project um, just because we're just amazed at the content that's available in Franciscan Meditations. Um, and again, it's not readily available anywhere right now we really want to bring it back um for catholics to benefit from um so that being said some of those earlier recordings will probably eventually go back and re-record and if anyone's listening if you've already purchased one of those in the past um as long as we uh you know you can show me a receipt or something and we'll just give you the the newer ones for free so there's oh, that's no problem great. there that's great wow so that's wonderful it's a wonderful work that you're doing i'm excited to listen to some of them myself because, you know, I'm really into meditation. And I want um, the listeners to know that I will link to it um, in the show notes. So Great. once I um, publish the podcast, there will be show notes and I will link to it so that you guys can have access to this wonderful material for only 99 cents each. So, Louis, thank you so much for being You're on welcome. our podcast. It has, been, on. it has been a pleasure and we hope to have you again very soon. All right. Great. Have a wonderful day and God bless. You too. And to your listeners, God bless you all. <laughs> bye bye.